we're pretty much halfway done with season six so I figured this would be a good time the positive side about Cold War zombies well I should say the Cold War game itself I'll go over the other modes quickly as possible and then I get to the the main focus being zombies first up the campaign it was uh, it was on an okay campaign it wasn't really the best mainly due to uh, it's been reused the same thing um, copy and paste like Black Ops 1 though they're trying to follow the same formula with it. but I do have to say my favorite mission it has to be Desperate Measures where you're playing as Comrade Belikov and you're just of course a mole inside the KGB headquarters it was so good. It reminds you of the the mission Liberation from World War II, where you disguise as a like a I don't know, like a Welcome back, Strike. Uh, like a German girl. I'm having difficulty establishing comms with as for multiplayer, I played a little bit. It's not my preferred multiplayer, and I find to be quite dull and very lack of fun and it's very boring to say the least and of course for Warzone I never touch Warzone still never had and never will alright now let's get to the basically what's held at least Cold War for so long and that is the co-op mode the zombies now Cold War Zombies has changed a lot compared to the previous titles. And of course the first one, I'll get over a few stuff out of the way. So before I talk about the other modes such as the round base, onslaught, and outbreak, I'll talk about the other features that are available to across all modes. I like I kind of like the fact that your level system, your rank up system does carry it over to multiplayer and your multiplayer stuff does carry over to zombies. So for example, if you just play a little bit of multiplayer and you reach to level 5, well instead of having a new level for zombies and start over again, you actually able to play zombies your first zombie game as a level 5 player which is pretty nice another thing I like the fact is it also applies when you are carried over the battle pass as well that's another thing I like I like how they introduced the battle pass into zombies well they did they technically kinda did a little bit with Black Ops 4 but you're going to have to complete for its uh, tier skips and you can only get two per day so if you're only mainly playing only zombies you're only gonna get two tier skips and that's basically to reach tier 100 it takes you 50 days straight to get to tier 100 if you're solely playing only zombies at that time which I did but it's nice that you can able to play and earn tiers just by playing in game and of course being outbreak probably the more better option now another thing of course I like is the music player I like how they give you the option to listen to have soundtracks in game so instead of just listening to the exact same music in the main theme or hearing the same round change music or even the dog round music now you can actually mix it up with some soundtracks that you hear from other Sonic titles or even from Black Ops games and still have a fun with it. For example, I have one of the soundtracks uh, alone on and that requires you to get free cassette tapes in Die Machine or get it from the radio a little world event from the outbreak.
So instead of trying to find the free cassette tapes over and over again, you can now able to listen it at any time you want. Which is a lot better. And definitely an improvement over Black Ops Free's soundtracks or music player, I should say, because you can only listen to the those music in the main menu and not in game. And of course, you can also earn more music by doing stuff in game. By of course reaching a certain tier in the battle pass will give you a war track and some of the music, mostly the Black Ops music, can be now added to your music player. You can also do the radios in the in Outbreak to get more. And of course by playing the campaign, multiplayer, or even the Dead Ops Arcade Free, you'll unlock more music with it. And you can actually listen to more of it as you desire. Alright, that's mostly up and another thing I like is now we have a console FOV slider or field of view slider. Normally it's a rare thing to have for a console, but since now new recent games are popping up, they're starting to show a little bit more love. Now you may see this FOV looks to be the same. But if I of course go to my settings, go to my graphics and change to all the way, let's say, 60, that's usually where the default is. Look how much closer I am to the area. You can see how horrible this looks. And you can see look how looks like I run very slow. And of course can't see much rounding, not that good. Of course, if I bump this back up to one 120, which is basically doubled it. Look how much room I have to see around me. Usually I would be like seeing the two fences here and that's it. And look how far I look, but when I run, I look like I'm actually running faster. So this FOV is definitely a huge improvement. And of course, it's not the first time I've seen a console game features an FOV. Uh, the first one being, of course, Payday 2. And it was incredible. I was, I kind of laughed about people demanded for a FOV slider for cons. Like, okay, how's that gonna work? That's like usually a PC thing, but to my surprise, they actually did it. So I shut up about it and actually enjoy it. And now let's get into the other midi and greedy stuff. Now I know a lot of people don't like the fact there's health bars and numbers to see how much damage you do to a zombie. But honestly I kind of like it. It should really shows how much damage you're actually putting. And it really helps to not waste a lot of bullets when you kill another zombie. But that's just usually a minor thing. Now another thing I do dig is having a mini-map. I like to be able to have the red dots around me and have of course the built-in UAV to see where the zombies are. This will give me a good indicator that there's how many zombies are left and if there's one left, I can always keep one alive. Now another thing I like here is of course applying to your blueprints. Now, of course, I do think the weapon kit system was a lot better than this. But honestly, it feels a little bit cool, and you can actually do it on the fly. And you can be able to switch what attachment you may want, or not at all. Now, as for... Now, as for another thing I like, is the ping system. This is great for both as the mic player and people who don't really play with mics, and sometimes I do with both. By ping, you can see by the ping, I can actually see it on my map, and I can tell there's one zombie left. 
And this is very helpful to see through walls. And also give you information that you can be able to tell if there's an enemy on that wall or there's actually a big threat. So like me that don't really talk a lot or don't really use my mic and they ping it, it gives me good information to know there's a big enemy, it's a big threat, they might be in trouble and they'll and I'll come for their aid. Kind of works similar to how you shout a special enemy in Payday 2. Except this time around when you ping, it actually stays there permanently on that target. Instead of just, you know, highlight it and then and then just disappear for a couple seconds. Now as we finally talk to the other modes, let's talk about the round based mode. So the round based mode definitely changed a little bit differently and this is more could give you a more approach to the casual player side rather than the OG and hardcore players alike. The, some of the changes they did was of course they will tell you where to go to flip the power on as well to activate the pack a punch. So in basically in every round based mode, the four round based mode we have in Cold War, all you have to do is just open a couple doors, turn the power on, and then activate the pack a punch machine. And of course by doing so, you basically open up most of the entirety of the map. And honestly, I do like this change because normally oh, normally you would either have to search up for a guide to how to open the pack a punch and try to do it on higher round is very difficult and sometimes you have no clue how to open it which is pretty dumb so at least give you the option to able by able to give you a little bit of hint and able to activate it is really nice of course figure out for other stuff like the main quest well you kinda had to do on your own of course the game does give you a little bit of a hint rather than just find shit on your own and then go interact with every wall by holding the square button. And that's another thing for round based mode. They did definitely change up the main quest to be a little more easier and more simpler compared to the more tedious and challenging aspects to it. And of course the reason for that is according to Treyarch only 2% of the players or the player base has actually uh, completed all the main quests in every game. I don't know if that's only um, go towards Treyarch games or if, if it's actually every zombie mode itself. Including uh, Including um, like Infinity War, Sludgehammer, and even Ravens, but there are other zombie games as well. It give you like a little bit of a hint, not like a big hint, not like uh, not like uh, the Final Reich's uh, main quest in Cod World War Two, where they give you a notebook and give you every objective to do. But that's mostly the casual side. But here, they actually give it a few hints, and most of the steps are pretty straightforward. Some steps are can be very annoying, maybe like the Minix step in uh, Firebase C. But the more times you do it, and the more time you know the location and everything by heart, it's not really much of a problem anymore, and it's really nice. I also find myself I've been replaying a lot of the main quests in Cold War than I have ever done than any other COD Zombies games at all. Hell, I probably play way more I probably done way more main quests on here compared to the others. Compared to other games combined. And it really shows, it really means a lot.
Now, of course, those are a few things I enjoy. Of course, there are a few downs I have with the Easter egg, of course, I'll talk about it in a later video. Another thing I like is the way they have added to at least spice up the gameplay for round based mode. One of the things they did was the Rampage Inducer. Added into the mid season of season 5. It's a canister that allows you to activate it, and once it's activated, all the zombies will be a lot more aggressive and they run pretty quick. Hell, you could probably even see them doing the whole War to War for Rux sprint emanation, which is scary as fuck. And of course, this helps you to level up your guns very quickly and able to get through the rounds a lot more quickly. As going through rounds in the earlier round does get a little bit boring, especially how the pacing of the zombies is. Though Trayer does have does um, come up and try to see if they can actually extend the duration of the Rampage Inducer in a later update. So far, that's not has been out just yet. Maybe hopefully before Vanguard release. Now another thing I like they did is is a, when it comes to the well the round base mode as well and I guess you could say for the mission box as well for most part is they made now they have a rarity each time of course when you start in game your loadout weapon will be a tier one and I do have to say I really don't mind that you start off with any weapon you like. It does help to make interesting challenges and saves you quite a lot of time on certain things. But as for the weapon tiers, it's nice that you have different tiers on for your weapons and of course you can increase it, increase it even further the higher you go. I also like the fact that you can also get armor this way, and of course you get different tiers, so legendary tier gives you even tier 5 damage, which does a little bit more. And of course every other, the higher round you go, the rarity of the wall weapons in the mission box will get better. Of course, they do have more attachments with it, but they're randomized attachments. But of course, if you have your, if you have your custom, your custom blueprint, you can able to apply that blueprint on that gun you found, and it makes a much of a lifesaver. Well, that's mostly a lot of talk about the round base mode. Now let's get into, well, get to uh, the onslaught quickly and of course it is the PlayStation exclusive mode it should be available to all other platforms around November because this is a whole Sony Activision exclusivity deal they have going on for ever since Black Ops 3 and they made a mode that's exclusive to PlayStation four and five for a year which is I'll talk about the exclusivity in a later video but as for the onslaught mode it's pretty much a mix between zombies and survival mode with the multiplayer maps from mall for free for example it was interesting it definitely had a fast paced feel to it and it was pretty interesting. They try to give it a try with the multiplayer map to see if it works. And after all, I did like how they try to mix it up a bit with certain new modes. And not only if it's a new mode, but they also try to make it with different maps too. Where in previous COD games, 
you do have additional modes like Black Ops 2 and 4, but you're still playing on the same round based map. In Onslaught, you actually play on the multiplayer maps. So it definitely feels a little more different and lot and of course this may be different to people's opinion on it. But I like how they went a little more differently this time. They're probably gonna do something a little bit more with it in Vanguard. After all, this is one of their experiment ideas. And I like how they keep updating it too, especially they improve it by now give you a chalice for other stuff. And either tools to upgrade your guns. Definitely a big improvement. What a great game. You run and I'll use this to push you. And uh And it was pretty interesting. Nice little fast paced mode and uh, I'll, even though I don't play as much with it as I used to, but I'll do play a little bit from time to time. Now we get into the bigger mode that's been probably the biggest uh, highlight to this game mode, favorite mode in Zombies. That is not a round based mode. And of course, it is Outbreak. The zombies' first ever open world sandbox experience. And how do I feel about this? Well, I. let's just say. It definitely was interesting. And definitely got a little bit better as more updates goes. And of course, I also like the fact they try to add a new additional stuff on the way for during events and that. Now, of course, the biggest difference here is, of course, the you have the objectives and you can go at any pace you want. I actually do dig Outbreak. And honestly, it felt a nice change of pace compared to the round base mode. Where in round base mode, I usually would have to... Uh, I would have to uh, basically stay in a linear path, either train around the zombies or camp. to mostly survive and I'm kinda grateful that's not the case with Outbreak it is much better I love the pacing and plus I can actually finally can able to use the sniper rifle to its full strength and rather than its weaknesses in close quarters and this makes it so much enjoyable to snipe I love to go with any gun and still do well with it just a little more differently compared to the others. Now, in terms of variety of enemies, I do like how there's different types. There's a lot of original ones, and of course, a lot of new ones and old ones. Of course, I like the addition of the Megaton. I think this was a cool little bit of a mini boss. Well, they classified them as elite. I still consider them a little bit of a mini boss to most part. Especially, I like the fact that when he dies, he actually splits into two. So I had to deal with two of them as opposed to one. Nice little bit of a whole last resort tactic. Another thing I like here is they scaled up with certain equipment, support, and field upgrade. Where in previous titles, the, the equipments don't are not that strong anymore. 
And most of the time, people would use the grenades to make a crawler. But here, the grenades actually do a lot of damage, and now they mostly become a one-hit kill for most part. And this is pretty handy to have with C4, Semtex, and even a monkey bomb is even more useful. Also, I do like what the armor system does, and of course, a lot of people wear preferred the shield because it got more personality, and you can able to use it as a weapon as well in usually in Black Ops 4. But to me, I just think the armor is what it's designed to be, which you do take health damage a bit, but you also take a bit of armor damage, so you saw your survivability will be even better. And of course, it makes it even better because you have Jug to increase your durability. Say if you will, but I do think the armor is a little bit too strong, but hey, it's still pretty nice to have, and... Even with a little bit of armor plate, it makes much of a difference than having no armor. Strauss, we've located the harvest and transport. But yeah, that's... Your team must the work. I also like that you can craft your stuff for your equipment as well with the salvage you pick up. I like how there's different types of currencies. You have your points, you have your salvage, and you have your high grade salvage, which is the blue ones. Of course, you can use the salvage to craft certain things. Craft your armor, craft your equipment, your support. The vortex's magnetic field has disabled the transport. Power will return once collection is complete. And that's pretty much about it about the positive size about Cold War zombies. And it's actually pretty fun. Uh, it was a very fun year. I do kind of say to my word, and I do say that Cold War Zombie is by far the most funnest zombies experience I have ever played. Even more fun than Black Ops 3. But I still still I still stand by with Black Ops 3 is still the overall best zombies experience to date with its uh, maps as well with the characters. But Cold War got me a lot more fun because thanks to new content also try and change up its formula from try and move a bit away from round base mode but also give other modes a try. Especially I would like to see something like this again for Vanguard Zombies. If they do something similar to Outbreak, and hoping they can make it even better than Outbreak, I will definitely play the shit out of it. If they can actually make it a little bit better, that is. But yeah, that's gonna be it for my positive size for Cold War Zombies. Also, another thing I forgot to mention is I love how... Basically, it's a way that there's no season pass, there's no map packs, all the maps you have is completely free. So you're not splitting up the play the community and the player base in terms of people own just the launch map or the DLC maps. And of course, I like how all the in-game stores is just cosmetics, so Treyarch definitely handled their monetization a lot better compared to Black Ops 3 and 4. And speaking of handling stuff pretty well, they also handled how you unlock weapons. Of course, you get certain weapons by completing the battle pass by tier 15 and 31 separately. And for the other weapons, by complete by their in-game challenges just by doing certain things. I love the fact they finally give you a challenge to do in Zombies, so you can able to earn the additional weapons without touching multiplayer. 
which sadly I had to do for a couple weapons at the time because they didn't release it for zombies until season 3. A little late, but better late than never, I suppose. And this is so much better because a much better cause a better zombie game in terms of handling of if if you give me the question of of all the zombie game you buy and I can only buy just the zombie game itself like which COD game I should buy and I can't go for additional DLC only just the launch game like comes with just the launch map what game should I buy for that does not count for DLCs I say Cold War is your best interest because you get every map together you get every map that you you don't have to pay for you don't have to worry about the currency stuff for the in-game store since they're all just cosmetic and you can able to earn all the game all the gameplay changes such as the weapons just by playing the game without with um, free of charge but yeah that's gonna be my take on the on the positive side for Cold War Zombies. I have a hell of a time with this game and I really really hope that Vanguard Zombie can actually do better but seeing that it's developed by Treyarch which they have just made a few contents weeks ago all I can say is I just really give Treyarch, I really cross my fingers and give Treyarch the hope that they can actually do well with uh, Vanguard Zombies, especially this is the first time they're working on a a new engine as opposed to their modified Black Ops 4 engine. But yeah, thank you for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe. And I'll do my... And of course, it doesn't have its flaws because I will cover up the bad side in another video. Until then, farewell and have a wonderful day everyone. And happy Halloween.